Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel, on this beautiful day. How you guys and girls doing? Hope you're doing great. Um, before you get started, just please check out the description box. You got a bunch of nice links down there. Um, you can follow me on Twitter. You can uh, drop a like, maybe subscribe if you want to. If you like the content, it really helps me out a lot. Otherwise, just keep watching and I hope you'll learn something new today. So we're just going to get started. We're going to talk about something called a specular map today. Now, I know we're supposed to talk about models and all that, but we'll get to that because this is such an easy thing you can implement to make your game look a little better or your textures and everything. Um, so I just want to talk about this, but I want to fix a few things before we get started. So I initialize the materials, but I actually want to send them to the shader visibly like where I can see that it's, it's being sent when I'm rendering something. So I'm going to remove it from update uniform and I'm going to put it in render above the use of the program. Okay, because remember, all of these functions, they unuse the program after they set all of these uh, variables. So then we need to set the shader once more, and then we're going to do stuff. So I'm just going to bind these two things. But one thing I want to do is I want to go into textures, and I want to add some stuff. So I'm going to have Pusheen here, and then I'm going to just push back its specular. Now you're like, what the hell is that? What the hell is going on? Well, if I look at my file, I created a few new textures. So I have Pusheen and Container, and then I created Container Specular and Pusheen Specular. Now all I did was I went into some kind of online um, online uh, thingy, uh, photo editor, and I just loaded in the texture, I set it to black and white, and then I went into Enhance or Basic, brightness contrast. So I made all the white areas be really white and all the darker areas be really dark. So what that does is it gives me a, a kind of area to sample from this texture to, to see where all the specularity is instead of being even all across. So what this is going to do is going to really help us out in, in making stuff look more realistic. So I'm going to load in Pusheen specular and then I'm going to load in container specular because I'm going to show you both of those. And what I want to do in my game.h now is I want to change my uniforms. So container, I'm going to remove the zeros and everything. So text pusheen specular. And then I'm going to text container and then text container specular. So that's going to be our four textures that we're loaded in. It should be fine. This is our regular material as well. No issues. And as soon as you initialize these, you should be able to use them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go down here where I bind them. I'm going to bind Pusheen to zero and I'm going to bind con or Pusheen specular. Specular to one. All right. So I'm going to bind those two textures and I should be able to just run this without any errors. I might get a crash because I changed the enums. It might be somewhere where I forgot. Nope. Okay, that still works. So there's no visible difference. I just want to show you. Right now, the specularity is the same all across the whole texture, right? Because we're not using our texture. Um, also, I just want to go into shader.h before we get started. And I kind of want to remove this. The C out of the source. I really don't want that to load every time. So there we go. Now, we're in our fragment core shader. Now, you, now obviously, you want to go into calculate specular to change it. But what do you change? What is actually happening? So let me just show you what the hell is happening. So we're sampling from this texture in the quad, right? At this pixel, this pixel, this pixel. Every vertex position or every, every texture coordinate is being sampled from here, right? One sample at a time, like this. Boom, boom, boom. And it's being put on to the quad that we're drawing, right? We have a quad and we're sampling from this texture for each pixel of that quad that's visible. Now, that happens where we calculate the diffuse, right? We, we use the, uh, let's see where it is, or we, we know we sample from it in main, in main here, uh, right here. So we're sampling, the final color is the texture color at that position multiplied by all of these other things, okay? So that's how, how we know. That's why we kind of uh, mix the 
all the rainbowish colors with the texture because we're adding a color to that as well, the VS color. If I remove that, you won't have that. So, but for this example, I think I am going to remove it um, because it kind of looks weird. So if I just run this now, you should just see the cat in its own. No rainbowish colors. Yeah, no rain rainbowish colors. And see how it's much, the specular is a lot, uh, a lot more visible. So we have that. Okay. Now it's sampling for that quad from this texture. Now we want to go in to where we calculate our specular. And we want to say, okay, this is the final specular color at that pixel. So at some certain pixel, you're having a really light color. But then I want to just multiply that with the strength of the color from the specular texture. So if we look at our files, and I know this might be a little complicated, but if I just open this file as well, and then I probably open this other file as well. So let me just show you. So we have our quad, right? And we have these two textures loaded in. So I'm sampling right here at this black, right this spot. I'm gonna sample at the exact same spot here and that color has an RGB value that is uh, pretty great, right? It's almost white, so it's almost up to one, 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 right? It's almost max. So I'm calculating there. So this color is gonna be multiplied by one, 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 meaning this is almost gonna be exactly what it's supposed to be, right? Which is some kind of brownish color. But if I go to this area where it's kind of white here, right? It's kind of gray. I'm going to sample from the exact same spot in the other texture. So that's why these two textures need to be the same size and exact same texture, almost, you know, the same size if you want it to represent the same thing. Um, so I'm going to sample here and I'm going to look here. Well, this is a little darker. So I'm going to multiply something that is almost like 0 0.7, 0 0.888, right? With something that's 0 0.1. So that's going to decrease this color a lot, right? At this point. So the specular at this point isn't going to be as strong as it is over here, even though this line is dark, right? So that way we kind of, this isn't a realistic specular texture for this, is just something I made. I just inverted the colors and, and for a real wall, you would probably where the shadows are and where, where all the brick is, you probably don't want a specular that is that strong, but in the corners or in metal areas, you want the specular to be almost up to white. So it really shines over there. Right, so this isn't realistic in that way, this is just an example. So, in this case, it's not really a realistic thing. Not here either, but here is, is a little easier to see because we have our container. This is supposed to be metal, right? So all the metal areas are a lot wider than the... Well, this should be a lot wider as well. So see, I haven't, I haven't really done that correctly uh, because I just inverted the colors again, um, basically. So. But if you look at here is wood, this shouldn't be specular either. It should just be some kind of damp color. So if you look at the learnopengl.com tutorial, they have better textures for specular and everything. I didn't bring them from that tutorial. I should have, but this at least this shows you what's going on anyway. So what's happening is I want to, this specular file, I just want to sample instead of just being regular, the 100% color. I want to sample from the texture and see, okay, I'm going to, should I dampen this color? Should I make it stronger? So. I'm just going to do texture and then material dot specular text vs at that texture coordinate dot RGB. You can write XYZ as well. You just have to swizzle this. It's called swizzling if we didn't talk about that before. Um, but it's going to take these three. This is going to be a vector three now which is going to have some strength. These three should be probably, excuse me, these three should be probably the same value, right? Like if it's gray, it will be 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, multiplied with all of this, the specular color, the final specular color. And that will give us a stronger or, or a weaker specular color. So that's what we want to do. And we have in our material class, we already have a sampler to the for specular texture. So this is zero and this is one in texture units. So I'm just going to run this and hopefully it's going to crash because obviously uh, VS text cord cord get the hell out of here Mr. C so there we go okay oh because I can't spell today so two O's please cord thank god please work okay so see how it's kind of dull now it was a lot stronger before but at the edge, it's a lot, lot, 
a lot stronger. So it's a little hard to see on this Pusheen, but the edges are a lot more stronger. See, it should be. And I hope you can see that. Let me just go ahead and, and change the texture. So we're going to go in the material or in texture dot, uh, no, game. And we're going to try with the other texture because I think it's a little easier to see. So I don't want to do that. I want to do text container and then text container specular. And if we want this with those two textures, hopefully you can see this a little clearer than what the hell is going on. See how, yeah, here is a little clearer. See, see how it's kind of more realistic looking, how at this spot it's, it's choosing to be stronger, the specular color and right there. See that? So we're kind of choosing where it should be. It's not just, it's not just kind of, whoa, 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 what the hell did I just do? Oh, shit. Oh, it's going minus in scale. Oh, damn. Okay. All right. That's cool. Uh, but see that? See, it looks beautiful, right? It looks crazy. So if you want to, if you want to make a more realistic looking texture simulation, kind of like this, you probably want to use specular textures. It's always good to use. It's not really like bump mapping or something like that. Uh, where you really see the bumps and, and more shadows in areas. This is more just about where it should shine a little more. So you want to use this in combination with bump mapping and other things. Uh, and and yeah, I wish I could show you the top. I haven't really invented a way for it to go up and down, I think. Let's see if we can just uh, go into update input. Uh, a, D, Q, and E is for rotation, scaling, moving... Uh, WSAD. All right. What if we create two more? So we have DZ and X, which would do a Y. Uh, so Z would be up. So that would be. 0 0.01 and 0 0.01 minus, I think, because W is somewhere, something like that. Okay, let's just see if this works. I don't know if this will work. Uh, why did I use those buttons? That's not a good idea. Uh, X and Z, because that's for scaling. Let's just do, uh, let's do F and G. Let's see if that works. Because then we can go up and down and I can show you all that stuff. Yeah, that's working. Okay. So if we look at the top here, there was a big spot for specular. You see that corner right there? So that's, that's beautiful. And it's the whole circle, the specular circle kind of is here. And you see how the wood isn't reacting to it, only the metal. See that? It's a very easy fix for you to make something look in a lot nicer than just a regular texture, right? So yeah, there you go. That's it. Um, please just remember to send the material stuff. Uh, so we, we removed it from update uniforms. We set it in, uh, in render here. And remember to send this stuff in, send to shader, because that's where we send our texture units in so that we can actually bind something to them. Otherwise, the shader doesn't know which unit is what. So this actually sets the shader. Let me just show you what's really important here. I know shader units are kind of annoying, but this sets the one integer in diffuse and specular text to zero and one. Okay. And it sets it to zero and one because when we create it, when we create the material, we say, okay, diffuse texture is going to be a unit one, specular texture is going to be a unit uh, or zero and one right and then we just send those in and set them in this function all right and that function looks like this just to be extra clear again looks like this so zero and one is being sent in to these two values and that's really important uh, and yeah just make sure you do it before you use the program for rendering so because this unsets the shader okay and so does this so these two all of this should be above using the program for rendering. So when you use the program, then you can bind the textures and render the mesh 
and then swap the buffers and, and clean everything up. So just remember that, please. Go ahead and do that. Uh, and yeah, there you go. You should be fine. Um, yep, let's see how long is this. That's fine. That's pretty long for a video. <laughs> of This should be this sh kind of short. Uh, but anyway, thank you for watching. Hope you learned something today. Please just check this uh, video out and just I hope you learned something and you can use this in your project. Play around with it. And try to make different specular textures. Get some from the net. Try to play with them and you'll be you'll be fine. Uh, check out the description box again for links and stuff. If you can subscribe, drop a like, please do. Uh, otherwise, just thanks for watching. And yeah, take care. I'll see you guys and girls in the next one. All right. Bye bye.